Hello from Olympia. It's week 12 of the 2023 legislative session and the House released its proposed operating, capital, and transportation budgets. Let's talk about a few of the areas I'm excited about. In our operating budget proposal, the House is keeping people fed and housed. Our poverty reduction efforts include $128 million in food assistance. Food is health, and when the federal pandemic era benefits ended, many families lost access to food benefits. This is important funding we are backfilling from the state. The House also proposed $175 million for emergency housing and rental assistance and an increase to our Housing and Essential Needs program. This will go a long way toward helping get people off the streets and the right-of-ways and into a warm place with a roof over their head. In healthcare, we propose expanding our public health funding by $100 million and increasing rates for primary care and pediatricians. We're also increasing our Medicaid rates for healthcare providers and expanding the Cascade Care subsidy to more families. Healthcare is a human right and every Washingtonian deserves access to quality, affordable healthcare. There's some great funding for our local programs in the Spokane area in the budget as well. Maddie's Place is a Spokane crisis nursery which provides skilled nursing care to infants who are exposed to substance use prior to birth. These babies require a lot of care and funding will help Maddie's Place meet the demand. Another great program I'm excited about is UW's Regional Initiatives in Dental Education or RIDE. This program is located in Spokane and immerses dental students in community-based clinics to get valuable experience providing dental care to local communities. This is a nationally recognized program and funding will help increase the number of dental students trained each year. All health starts with oral health, so the more dental students we can train in the Spokane area to meet the needs of rural and underserved communities, the healthier Washington will be. Another exciting grant is included for the Thrive Center, the first refugee transitional housing center in Spokane, and they focus on helping those from Ukraine. Housing, educational programs, and other resources for refugees and immigrant families are provided along with other programs and resources. Back in January, I spoke out against the governor's proposal to pause the North Spokane corridor due to a reduction in revenue. That pause would cost us more in the long run and would delay the benefits for our region. I'm proud to announce that the North Spokane Corridor is funded in the House proposed transportation budget and will continue to push for its funding through the final compromise budget with the Senate. This is a project that will not only pay for itself in economic impact, but also benefit our state with significantly reduced travel time and emissions. Spokane also had some great projects funded in the capital budget. The Glentana land acquisition is a huge deal. If funded, the Inland Northwest Land Conservancy will hold the land for local partners such as the Washington State Parks and Recreations Commission and the Spokane Tribe of Indians to secure funding to complete the project. The Waikiki Springs Nature Preserve will be connected with the Riverside State Park completing an 1,100 acre habitat and trail corridor with riparian vegetation, meadows, forest land, and natural rock outcroppings. This recreation trail corridor will also include tribal salmon reintroduction efforts to the Little Spokane River. I'm excited to help bring this project one step closer to completion and have a whole new outdoor area for Spokane residents to hike, bike, run, or simply get out and enjoy our beautiful surroundings. There's a lot more in the budgets that will impact you, so please reach out to my office if you have any questions or want more information. In a few weeks, the final budgets will pass the legislature and I'll have more details for you then. It's an honor to serve you.